the consequences, if any of this is true, if just one case is true, are so huge that it would be the biggest revelation in the human experience. We would have to rethink everything we think we know about ourselves, our place in the cosmos, and it is scary. UFOs are one of the great unexplained mysteries of human existence, and yet the idea of them is so controversial and so divisive, it's almost taboo to even talk about them. Well, in this series, we're going there, and we're going deep. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow, look at the UFO. My name is Stephen Greenstreet. I'm a journalist with the New York Post. Over the next few episodes, we're going to examine the UFO phenomenon from every possible angle, including video evidence. What is it? It's some kind of light. No, it's not. No, 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 no. no. no, no. Witness accounts. I saw this up close and personal. And scientific analysis. It almost suggests a new physics. All with the hope of gaining a better understanding of just what the heck these things are. Investigation going on as we speak to find out what this is. Are they man-made or are they alien? Uh, don't get him too close to me, please. Sir. <laughs> That's the loaded question we'll keep returning to in this series. But for all you skeptics watching, by the end of this episode, I guarantee you, you're going to be convinced something is out there. Because even if you don't believe in UFOs, our government definitely does. We want the United States government to stop perpetuating the myth that all UFOs can be explained away in down-to-earth and conventional terms. Welcome to the basement office. We are going to begin our series by dissecting the government's involvement in the world of UFOs. The mind-blowing fact the military has admitted that they exist, and that according to the Pentagon, they pose a quote, threat to our homeland. We have the government insider when it comes to this matter, a man who has been called the real life Fox Mulder, thanks to his work researching UFOs, Nick Pope. Nick, you're very credentialed, you've got a, a lot, your resume is, is quite expansive. Why don't you give me the uh, nuts and bolts of it? I worked for the British government for 21 years at the Ministry of Defense, and for much of the early 90s, I ran the UK's UFO program. So my job was to research and investigate the phenomenon and come to a, a judgment about whether there was evidence of any threat to the defense of the UK or anything of more general scientific interest. So you've outlined everything you did in the UK investigating UFOs. Does the US government have a similar program? Yes, the US started in the UFO game in 1947, and they had then three programs under the name Sign, Grudge, and Blue Book. Blue Book was the most famous, long-running one. It was essentially the same thing. Research and investigate the phenomenon, see if there's a threat. Since 1947, we have received and analyzed between one and 2,000 reports. The Air Force interest in this problem has been due to our feeling of an obligation to identify and analyze to the best of our ability anything in the air that may have the possibility of threat or menace to the United States. So that was a public program. Then in 1969, they pulled the plug. They said, OK, we've investigated, haven't found any evidence of a threat. We're out of the business of looking at this. And very recently, uh, it was revealed that actually they did have a program and probably still do. And I'm amazed how little political fallout there has been over the fact that uh, the media and the US people were effectively misled on that issue for decades. The truth came out in December of 2017, when the New York Times published a bombshell story revealing the existence of a secret Pentagon program to investigate UFOs called ATIP, or Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Here's what the Pentagon told me the mission was. The ATIP program did pursue research and investigation into unidentified aerial phenomena. 
The Department of Defense is always concerned about maintaining positive identification of all aircraft in our operating environment as well as identifying any foreign capability that may be a threat to the homeland. The department will continue to investigate through normal procedures reports of unidentified aircraft encountered by U.S. military aviators in order to ensure defense of the homeland and protection against strategic surprise by our nation's adversaries. Back in 2017, when the New York Times published their report, they also released a number of videos revealing Navy encounters with UFOs. In an exclusive statement to the Post, the Pentagon told me these videos were, quote, for research and analysis purposes by U.S. government agencies and industry partners, and not for general public release. So the general public was never supposed to see these videos. One of these three took place off the coast of San Diego in 2004, involving uh, the USS Nimitz and one of its, or two of its F-18 Navy fighters, fighter jets. This is the footage that was captured. They see this tic-tac object um, which you're seeing here in this footage and the pilot said it was at least as long as his plane so about 40 feet so the thing you're looking at is about 40 feet long but he said there was another object below it just underneath the surface of the water that was maybe 10 times as long and this tic-tac was like hovering above the surface of the water and then would just disappear and he said there were like two two antenna, L-shaped antenna, like on the bottom of this thing. Now, while the footage itself, uh, alone without context, offers nothing mind-blowing, the story behind what you're looking at is, why should I be worried or uh, dig deeper into the Nimitz footage? You don't know what you're looking at, but that, in a sense, is the point of the story. You don't know what you're looking at. The pilots don't know what they're looking at. The radar operators don't know what they're tracking and the whole radar aspect of this story is very important in terms of corroboration. It's not just these trained observers, the pilots, it's being tracked on radar too. And in a sense, the story is simply that the US military in their fastest jets can't catch these UFOs. They are, they are running rings around them, there's something out there and there's this marvelous quote that I think one of the pilots came out with after this, when he was asked, well, what do you think? He said, I don't know what it was, but I sure as heck want to fly one. <laughs> now, when a US Navy, when, when one of the top guns tells you something like that, this should be telling everyone something about UFOs. Right, and uh, it's fascinating to hear, like we're, now we're gonna watch this um, 2015 footage. The 2015 footage was taken off the East Coast, same deal, FLIR footage uh, from Navy fighters. Dude, there's a f***ing drone, bro. There's a whole fleet of them, look on the ASA. My gosh. They're all going against the wind, the wind's 120 knots to the west. Oh, I think, dude. That's not an LNS though, is it? It's not. That is an LNS, dude. Well, if there's like a thing, it's rotating. Now, guys, what blows my mind is, again, people whose full-time jobs are to defend this country, to take to the air, identify threats, know when they're there, and to take them out. They see these things and they're like, wait, what do we do? <laughs> and when they start suddenly saying, look at that thing go, like, you know, there's a whole fleet of them. Wow. And you can yeah. hear the, the tension and excitement in their voices. And you know that something extraordinary was going on. Yes. And uh, the last clip we're going to play is the third of these three videos that were released. It's called the Go Fast UFO, where they, um, these pilots observe an extremely fast moving object and are able to actually hone in on it. Their cameras are actually able to lock on this object and you hear it in their voice. In fact, I'm gonna turn it down because they get so loud. There it is. They're trying to lock in on it. This thing's moving. Check out 
Roger. Uh, there's a couple of shooting shooters. What the f*** is that? Did you box moving target? No, I took an auto track. Oh, uh, okay. Oh my gosh, dude. Wow, look at that, man. Look at the fly. They're watching this thing zip so fast, and they're like, look at that thing moving. These are guys that move for a living. These are guys that do fly for a living, and they're blown away. Exactly. When you fly thousands of miles an hour, uh, you don't get excited about that kind of thing unless it's uh, orders of magnitude beyond it. And, and clearly, they were seeing and experiencing something they'd never come across before. Apparently, these clips are just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to naval encounters with UFOs. In fact, pilots have experienced so many sightings that in recent weeks, Brass has been forced to implement an official reporting protocol. But it turns out, UFOs aren't just a Navy problem. I spoke with John Greenwald, who runs the Black Vault, a site dedicated to unearthing government secrets by using the Freedom of Information Act and he discovered that the Air Force is also dealing with UFO sightings. There's an Air Force manual that was called 10-206. It was undeniable proof that the Air Force was uh, mandating their personnel officers to report UFOs. And so I traced the lineage of that particular document all the way through where the UFO reports had gone and so on. Uh, I am comfortable saying that there were UFO procedures and obviously they're there for a reason to investigate. And what I did through the Freedom of Information Act was not only discover that document, but throughout the years see that they were actively updating it. Now, why is this important? Well, because you can easily argue if something is not updated that it's potentially a manual, a procedure, something on the books that they forgot about, that they don't care about. But they were actively updating it and UFOs, specifically in chapter five of this manual, never came out. What that tells me, I mean, if UFOs were bunk, if UFOs didn't exist, if UFOs weren't anything that the military should be concerned about, it wouldn't be in a manual for the Air Force, right? That's right. Bigfoot's not in the US Air Force manual, is it? No. You know, uh, the Yeti isn't, ghosts aren't in the US Air Force manual, UFOs are. Do UFOs exist, John? Yeah, absolutely. So the Navy is not alone in encountering UFOs. The Air Force literally has it in their manual. We have video evidence of this. This is a video clip from Nellis Air Force Base, which is very close to actually Area 51 out in, in Nevada, of a saucer, round saucer looking object uh, flying about and the military folks viewing this and observing this are commenting on it. What the heck is this thing? Do we have anything out? What's going on? And of course, this being close to Area 51 could be anything, but the fact that these guys on base have no idea. This is where it gets interesting to me. Now, I don't buy into many of the conspiracy theories about this, most of which say, well, it's probably some secret military program. These are the people that run the secret military programs, and when they're the ones having the discussion saying, hey, we've got this weird thing, uh, then it, it should be a wake-up call for everyone. And military personnel are not the only pilots encountering UFOs. We're actually going to listen to audio, FAA audio, of commercial airliners having close encounters. This first one takes place off the coast of Oregon in 2017. Did you know uh, that right. target south of the boundary there, that 0027 code moving very fast at 37,000? Oh, look at that thing. Yeah, that's uh, crazy. Huh, um, and you don't have anything on him, huh? I got nothing. Well, we'll look. Yeah, if you're six twelve, it's just a white speck out there. I mean, uh, we can see it, but uh, there's no identification on it. Just uh, that it's there. Where this guy ended up, we don't know. Oh, so we still don't know. No, the fighters scrambled. They went out looking around a little bit, but we, yeah, we lost. Uh, we lost anybody having sight of the aircraft. Wow, that's weird. It's really weird, yeah. Well, this is, is typical of, of, I guess, the sort of case that interests me. A, a UFO where you're having this discussion, and it's not some friend of a friend story. We have the recordings. And for the skeptics who say that no one takes UFOs seriously, 
they scrambled military jets to try and intercept this thing and, and get a look at it. And wait, what does it tell you when an F-16 can't catch something? Right. Then clearly it goes back to the point, speed and maneuverability. These UFOs, whatever they are, run rings around our best air defense fighters. Mm -hmm. From your lofty position at the Ministry of Defense investigating UFOs, what are some of the mind-blowing realities about these observed objects? Well, I think it's the speeds and the maneuvers. I've sat down and spoken to Air Force pilots, commercial pilots, radar operators, who have told me about visual sightings and radar tracking of objects, performing speeds and maneuvers that we simply can't match. I mean, not, not just it's a little bit faster than us because then you could say well maybe it's just next generation stealth fighter but orders of magnitude above and beyond anything we can do the idea that an object can hover a huge object you need an incredible amount of energy to, to keep something hovering like that some of these UFO reports credible reports pilots military personnel police officers talk about objects the size of a football field the size of an aircraft. Carrier. No sound. No sound. They don't break the sound barrier. They, yep. They're going Mach 2, 3, 4 to 10. No sound barrier. Boom. No sonic booms. It almost suggests a new physics, or, or rather physics that we currently can't understand or replicate. Okay, so the clip we're going to see here uh, takes place over the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Ireland between British Airways flight and a Virgin Atlantic flight and of course the radar tower. Any uh, military traffic you got right now? There's nothing showing on either primary or secondary. Okay, it was moving so fast, in fact you can no longer see it, but yes, thank you. Uh, along the side you. Get to uh, come up on our left hand side and then rapidly veer to the north. Uh, it's so bright light and then it just disappeared at a very high speed. I'm still just wondering. We didn't think it was a likely collision course, we're just wondering what that could have been. Uh, the Virgin 76 uh, also saw that in our uh, 11 o'clock position, uh, two bright lights. Say again? Uh, Virgin 76, I saw uh, two bright lights, 11 o'clock, seem to um, back over to the right and then uh, climb away at, uh, at speed, at least from our perspective. Okay, we're passing that on there, thank you. Meteor or another object making some kind of re-entry. Appeared to be multiple objects following the same sort of trajectory, uh, but very bright from where we were. Okay, that's copied. Glad it wasn't just me. No, uh, yeah, very interesting that one. Okay, just so you know that uh, other aircraft in the air have also reported the same thing, so we're going to have a look and see. Okay, so the thing that blows me away about this is uh, the description of what they're seeing. They see two bright lights. The one pilot says it came up. She describes it coming up and then veering away at speed. And pilots are familiar with airspeed, um, what's moving, how fast, etc. When you've got multiple pilots exclaiming, this sucker is moving very fast. Uh, what's going on here, man? <laughs> well, I, it's interesting because the main skeptical theory here is that it was maybe the burning up in the Earth's atmosphere of some sort of fireball meteor. But then you listen to the recording, you, you hear clear references to a change of direction. One of the references to the object veering away. One of the other references to the object climbing rapidly. It goes back to the point, it's not just the speeds, it's the maneuvers. And again, there are dozens if not hundreds of these, examples of these. Let's take a listen. Number seven one, Papa Golf, go ahead. And it was anybody at sun, uh, above us that passed us like 30 seconds ago? Number seven one, Papa Golf, negative. Okay. The UFO. Yeah. American uh, 1095, uh, let me know if uh, you see anything pass over you here in the next uh, 15 miles. So you don't know if anything passes over? American 1095 affirmative. We had an aircraft in front of you at uh, 37 that reported something passed over him, and uh, we didn't have any targets. So just uh, let me know if you see anything pass over you. I don't know what it was. It wasn't an airplane, but it was the path was going the opposite direction. It's American 1095. Yeah, something just passed over. So, uh, back up. 
Don't know what it was, but it's at least two, three thousand feet above us. So yeah, I passed right over the top of us. Okay, American 1095, thank you. American 1095, can you tell if it was uh, in motion or just uh, hovering? Make it out whether it was a balloon or whatnot, but it was just really either bright or so I had a big reflection on it several thousand feet above us going opposite directions. Okay, Roger. Was it a Google balloon? That's yeah, well. Do I follow? Okay, so another example of American Airlines pilot, you know, flying through the air. I mean, picture this. You guys have been on planes. The audience, everyone's been on planes. Imagine your pilot in the in 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 the cockpit going, whoa, like what was that? And then calling the radar control tower and going, hey man, uh, did something just like fly over us? Radar tower says we got nothing, right? We don't see a thing, right? And then they call the in this clip they call the airline the airplane behind him and says, hey, uh, this guy in front of you saw something pass over you. Tell me if you see something. Zip. It flies over him. Now, the pilot there, interestingly, he wasn't afraid to use the phrase UFO. Most of them are, and I've come across many, many cases where people get around this by just using code phrases like, we've seen an unusual aircraft or an unconventional helicopter. The word UFO, you say it, people have a knee-jerk reaction that it equals aliens. UFO, aliens. It, it means unidentified flying objects. We've investigated, we looked at this thing, and we still don't know what it is. It's a UFO, it's an unidentified flying object. UFO is, or should, mean simply something in our airspace that we can't identify. And of course, every government and air force on the face of the planet wants to know what's in its skies. Are there any threats? Are there any opportunities? Is it the Russians? Is it somebody else? I can't deny, I sit here right now and I can't deny that UFOs exist. I can't go that far to say they're extraterrestrial, but correct me if I'm wrong, the leading hypothesis is that they are. Yes, even within government, we admitted that it was a possibility. But the more I delved back into those real life X-Files and the more I started investigating the new cases that came in every day, the, the more I began to, to say, wait a minute, not all these people are wrong. Not all these people are crazy. And what do I tell the, the pilot? be they an experienced commercial aircraft captain, or be they a fast jet pilot in the Air Force. What do I tell those sorts of people when they come to me and say, I've seen this incredible object, I chased it, uh, it outmaneuvered me at every turn. Dude, it's scary stuff. It is scary, yeah, I, I totally agree. I think if they are visiting us here, although we have a space program, we haven't got very far. Any technology that that viable interstellar travel technology that extraterrestrials must possess if we are being visited is clearly orders of magnitude above anything we've got and yes absolutely that's scary that's why government views this in terms of threats and opportunities because it, they are smarter than us and more advanced, that's, that's a worry. You know, the skeptics have to be right every single day. The believers only need to be right once, and this is the ultimate game changer. I mean, we only need all those documents that you've read, all those cases you've looked at, all the videos, um, only one of them needs to be extraterrestrial, and it, we rewrite the history books. Right. Only one of those changes the course of, of humanity. <laughs>